Well, welcome to the Ewe Den. This is uh, the very first episode of A Pattern a Day. I really appreciate your support. And as you're working inside the den, if you see some things that aren't working or you have some suggestions, please email me because I want to keep working on this and make it better for everyone. And it's easier to teach a student that's asking questions. And today we'll, we will get to pattern number one, but we sort of have to frame what we're doing. So this video is going to be a little longer than I envision these being but I think it's important that we talk about some things. And first of all, let's talk about a scale routine. Hopefully you have a scale routine. A scale routine is a place where you can constantly introduce new vocabulary into your playing and refine and perfect your technique. So if you have a scale routine, I have three recommendations for additions. Uh, you should do the major scales in the home fingerings. What are home fingerings? Well. Home fingerings are the fingerings that are the instrument you came to the iwi from. So most people come to the iwi from saxophone, flute, clarinet, oboe, recorder even. And those fingerings, if you grew up a saxophone player, that would be home. So what I've done, I've made a document that has like the home fingerings for each one of those instruments that'll work with the iwi standard fingerings. And when we have a note that doesn't work, I have an iwi standard uh, recommendation to use. And you should work through those fingerings and play your major scales with those. That would be the first recommendation. Number two would be to play another loop around your scales using transposable fingerings. And I put a document with every major key and the transposable with the transposable fingerings in the resource area as well. And lastly, you should do one more loop around the major scales uh, using the pentatonic group fingerings. I, I put uh, a PDF of those fingerings as well, but it'll be more important to watch the transposing transposable fingering lesson video. And I put that in this lesson, so just make sure that you watch that and then that'll make some sense. Okay, what are we doing with the pattern a day? Like, what do we want to gain from it? Well, it's a, it's a place in a method of exploring the strengths and weaknesses of each one of these systems so we can intuitively and quickly, while we're improvising, make decisions about which ones to use. So we're going to develop a very flexible approach to fingerings while we're playing the Iwi. This is really like a slow motion look at all the possibilities. And that's what we're really going to do. And the way we're gonna accomplish that is by taking patterns, all kinds of different patterns, and then applying them to the root movement document, which gives us like basically all the ways that chords can move. And if we do this enough times, we can build an intuitive response to our fingering choices, right? So along the way, we get to explore, you know, melodic development, how to, how to manipulate and vary patterns, uh, chord scale relationships. We can discover some practical solutions for some improvisational situations. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. How much time should you spend on this? Well, if, if you're a intermediate advanced player you should just set a timer for 10 minutes you know and and no longer than that because you have other things that you want to practice but this is a pretty important area so you want to give it time to get into your playing right so just set a timer for 10 minutes and then play each root movement line three times once with the home fingerings once with the transposable fingerings and once with the pen pentatonic group now start slowly with no metronome and your body and your mind and your ear will kind of fall into whatever your comfortable processing speed is. And that's where you should begin. Once we can measure that, that speed, you know, the speed that we just naturally do it, then we can set a metronome for that speed and we can just slowly go up from there. And naturally over time, the speed will increase, but don't, don't rush the process. You know, there's a lot of neurology to build. You know, we're training our ear, we're training our mind, we're training our body. It's three different systems and we sort of want them all to meld together. So don't rush. You know, stress, stress and panic 
inhibit progress. So if when you're practicing, you're trying to play as fast as you can and, and you're glitching a lot and you know your mind's kind of freaked out, you're not really building any neurology that's going to help you play better. So just always stay calm and relaxed and be patient. Your mind will gradually catch on to this cycle and go faster and faster and faster. And, and that's the, it's irony, but staying relaxed, calm, and slow is the fastest way to get home. Okay, so it's not a technical exercise yet, but it will turn into one. So today's pattern is one, two, three, five. It's a very famous pattern. Uh, John Coltrane used this pattern quite a bit uh, when he introduced his Giant Steps album, and he used it on Giant Steps and Countdown, pretty much. You know, so it always was interesting to me that he used such a simple pattern over such a complex chord progression. And I think it's because one, two, three, five really establishes a key center quickly. Here's a quick explanation of uh, how we're going to build our patterns. If this is new to you, you want to go check out the novice video. And, and then, then after you do a loop around with the novice videos, you can come back and do this again. It'll make a lot more sense. But just to catch up a review, we just, we're going to use digital patterns in some regard. And so all you do is you number a major scale one through seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the numbers will always refer to the major scale. And today's pattern is one, two, three, and five. So in the key of C, that would be C, D, E, and G. Okay, so... At this point, you would set your timer for 10 minutes and play down the root movement page. You know, here it is. And we would, you know, play home fingerings, transposable fingerings, pentatonic group fingerings, then go to the next line. And when the timer rings, you're done. And go on to your next your next group. If you get the whole way to the fin the bottom, you're finished too. And you probably should be trying to figure out what speed you're playing that out because that would be a good time to introduce the metronome and then gradually speed these patterns up over time. You'd be surprised as we add new patterns, you'll still be able to speed them up because your mind will get better at thinking in every key. So you're gonna play each line three times, one with home fingerings, one with transposable fingerings, one with pentatonic group fingerings. And stop when the timer rings or when you finish. Okay, if you find yourself keeping time, measure the speed, and tomorrow play the, the next pattern at that speed. So I'll demonstrate the one, two, three, five around the circle of force, which is often referred to as the cycle. Uh, and, and I'll use, uh, I'll do saxophone fingerings for the first time around the cycle transposable fingerings for the second time around the cycle. And the third time around the cycle, I'm gonna start on in the key of D because that's where the pentatonic uh, fingerings start. If you watch the video, you catch on to that and why. And here we go. So here's the saxophone fingerings around the circle. <laughs> Here's the transposable fingerings around the cycle. And then the pentatonic group, I'm gonna start on D because the pentatonic, act, the pentatonic group actually is D, G, C, F, and B flat. Then you transpose up, you do that again transpose up twice and then you do it the last two keys. So here we go, a pentatonic cycle. And there you have it. Uh, that's our pattern for the day. And we'll be back tomorrow to expand on what we're doing a little bit more and do Pattern number two.